Okay, so now what I'd like to do is cover how to um, subtract a whole number from a fraction. So again, when we're dealing with fraction operations and we have a whole number, is we're going to want to write our whole number here as a fraction. Um, so now, again, we can always take any whole number, divide it by 1, and now it's written as a fraction, right? And again, 8 divided by 1 is just 8. But now it's in fractional form. And what's important about this is when we're applying operations with fractions, uh, we have to have common denominators. So what we need to do is obtain what is the common denominator of 3 and 1, right? They're not the same, so we need them to be the same. And the smallest multiple that they both share, again, you can list out the multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, counting by 3s. And if you count by 1s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you can see that the common multiple that they share, counting by 3s or counting by 1s, is 3. So to obtain a 3 in the denominator here, I need to multiply by 3. All right, you've got to make sure you want to multiply by 3, not add by 2, because that's not going to produce an equivalent fraction. And what my point by an equivalent fraction is, when you multiply by 3 on the top and the bottom, you produce a fraction that is equivalent to the number 8. Oh, I was supposed to subtract. So in this case, um, so you can see now 24 over 3 is going to be 8. So you can see how they are the same. So now I just go ahead and apply my operation to my numerator. So it's a 4 minus a 24 over 3. And 4 minus 24, so if you have $4 and you owe me $24, then you now owe me $20 over 3. And again, we could write this as a mixed number by saying how many times does 3 divide into 20 evenly? Well, the most number of times it divides there evenly is 6 times. So therefore, the negative is just going to be out in front. So that's a negative 6. And therefore, that would be 18 with a remainder of 2. So that would be 2 thirds. So the answer is negative 6 and 2 thirds. How are you doing, sir?